So the reason we draw geological cross-sections through maps is to illustrate the three-dimensional structure of an area. In this exercise, we're going to look at a map which comes from, or is based on, an area on the outer parts of the French Alps. It's highly simplified, but it still has topography and rock units, and we can use these together with the orientation data of these dips to build up a cross-section between A and A prime, from west to east across the section. So the first thing we need to do is to draw a topographic profile. So we're going to set up the scale. So I'm just going to pencil and a map strip and measure one kilometer off on the scale here and take this onto our graph paper so we get the vertical scales and horizontal scales equal. And I'm going to set up that as one kilometer vertical and that will be the horizontal scale as well. So I'll just put that down in here. So that is 1 km, setting it up as sea level, set that up as 1,000 meters, because that's more or less as high as the topography goes in here, and we can continue to draw our cross section through the map. So if we look at the map, we see that the contour spacing is 50 meters, worth bearing that in mind as we go across. So we put our map strip down on here, mark off where A prime will be. And we're just going to build the topographic profile by extracting the information from the topographic contours and transferring it onto our graph paper. So start off. So that is 750. That is 1000. So I'll put 1750. Uh, and there should be four other topographic contours in here. One, two, three, four, which represent the intervals between 750 and 1,000. That is a shade over 1,000, so that's 1,050. That's 1,050, so that's a top. And I'll just do it like that. And there is our 1,000 on the other side of our hill. Keep going down. That's 750 again. Let's put these intermediate four ticks again. One, two, three, four. Keep coming across here now. And we go down one, two, three, four. That's going to come 500, so that's 550. That's 550 as well. And that's a valley. That's 550 as well. So that's a hill. That's 550. So that's a valley. So just putting some annotations on here as we go across. So let's keep going on up. One, two, three. And there's 750. I'll say it's in the crease. That's the hilltop, so that's 750 again. So that's a hilltop. One, two, three, four. That's 500. Just to see where we're aiming for, that's 250 there. So one, two, three, four. That's 250 meters. Just see how that works. That crosses to 250 there. That's the valley bottom where the river is. That's 250. So that's a very broad sort of plateau top. And it then drops all the way down here to 200 meters. There's a river and here we get to A. So let's just mark that out. And A is at 200 meters as well. 200. 200. So there's the information on the profile. We just have to take this and transfer it onto the graph paper. So let's just mark on how we're starting our cross section with A prime. And now let's divide up our vertical scale into the correct intervals. So there we go. That's our divided vertical scale. And now all we need to do is simply plot our profile horizontal against this vertical scale. We've got a hill, a broad saddle area, another hill down into the valley bottom. So there's our inked in topographic profile. What we're going to do next is transfer the geology from the map onto this profile. We can use the map strip, which I'll put onto here again. Um, we'll label that A prime. 
that'll be A over there when we get there. And let's just put the geology on as we go. So just the boundaries, there's that piece there, which is the orange, which actually I can see is the Ergonian from the key. Let's keep going, I've marked the edges where they intersect the line of section. There's the edge of that unit again there. So that's the orange, the Ergonian, a light green, which is the upper Cretaceous, upper Cretaceous, a little strip of Eocene, which comes down to the river. Oops, running off the section line a bit. A strip of lower Miocene, and then this is upper Miocene, all the way through to A. I'll just put that on again so we know where we are. A. So, and I've marked here A prime. So we've got all this, this just to complete this so we know where we are and we don't make mistakes. That's lower Cretaceous, a little bit of lower Cretaceous over here by A prime. So now we take that information we've taken from the map and we transfer it onto our profile. All right, so let's line up the map strip with A prime in here and bring it right up to the topographic profile. And that is this point that there is, is here. So those are the orange units. I'll just put some orange on this as we go so we know where we are. I'm just gonna put this just along the topography like that. We won't prejudge what's going on in the subsurface in there. Let's go to, to this other side of the orange, which we can tie into here, which is um, there. Okay, so there's the orange, and the orange comes all the way down. Just keep careful on this to make sure we know where it's going to come. The orange there comes to about here, so that is all orange there. I'll tidy this up again just to keep a bit of housekeeping going. We've got the upper Cretaceous, which is here, and then it comes to here. And the Eocene, yes, hits the valley bottom there. So we'll just put the little bit of pink for the Eocene. And then finally, we'll just put this other boundary on here, which is between the upper and lower Miocene, which is there. And I'll just mark the final bit over here, brown, so we know what we've got. So quick bit of housekeeping through there. We've got the um, Ergonian, the orange rocks on, the, on this hill here. We've got it on this hill here. On this slope here, which is coming down towards the river, we've got the Upper Cretaceous, Eocene, the pink units right in the valley, attractive yellow Lower Miocene, which I've not coloured in on the profile, and then Upper Miocene running over to point A. So now let's put the dips onto our profile in here. I'll just use a protractor for this. So here these rocks are dipping. Well, they're the section line is straight, more or less straight down the dip of these uh, symbols in here. So we don't have to do any corrections. In fact, as we look all the way across here, the strikes are running more or less perpendicular to the section line. So we can use more or less the dips that we see or have been measured uh, and then recorded on the map. So let's start by doing that uh, with this number in here, which is eight degrees. So let's put on our dip in this position, spin this around, it's dipping at eight degrees. Um, so I'll just put that on there like that and rotate. So that's eight, it's eight degrees there. So that is the dip here, dipping in under the hill. On this side, it's 10 degrees back this way. So I'll just put that like that, spin it 10, that's 10 degrees, dipping like that. Well, actually it's a bit higher on the hill, it's here something like that. Uh, that's 16, which we'll put at about there. About there. So that's a dip of 16. And we can just continue across the profile now, adding this dip information. So there we go, our dips on the profile. And again, let's just ink these in because they are data. So then we've got our dips shown with these sort of tadpole shapes. And I'll just put some ink on where the boundaries occur. And now let's just add some more color so we complete a strip of the geology all the way along the outcrop. So there's the geology along the transect. And our mission now 
is to show how these units relate to one another and to interpret the structure away from the topography. So let's start with the easy bits. This hill here, this part on our profile, we can walk around the hill, around the edge of the orange or the Ogonian and have this light green all the way around. And that is all low ground compared to the top. So presumably then this simply links up like this. So we've got a broad, very broad uh, sin form that's capped by this, well, this, the hill sits in the core of it. So we can just simply cartoon up or color in the Ogonian in here and join up the light green lower Cretaceous unit beneath. So that was fairly easy. Now, presumably, this Ogonian connects over to here because it's the same unit and there's light green which would just link through. But in order to draw this in, we want to have some idea of the shape of the structure. We can see from the dips in here that they are inclined over, arching over into a broad antiformal shape. But let's look at the map and we can see that just beneath the line of section, as we go into the adjacent valleys, there are these dark green lower Cretaceous rocks and they're only just missing the section line. They come just above that contour, which is the fat one at 500 meters. So down here, just below the surface, is presumably these dark green rocks, which I'll just color in now. They don't quite come into the section line. So with that in mind, we can join the Ergonian in and get some idea of what the lower Cretaceous II unit is doing. So presumably this comes across like this and then dives down and the Ogonian likewise will come over something like that. The test of this is that we're inferring that the boundary between the two lower Cretaceous units should be rather gently dipping if it was beneath this hill. And if we look in the adjacent areas in here, this boundary between the lower Cretaceous one and lower Cretaceous two, yes, indeed, it's almost horizontal. It's just running pretty close to parallel to the topographic contours, this side and this side. So that's about right. So that the boundary in here is quite gently dipping. And we'll draw that in. Sketch in the younger part of the lower Cretaceous and then the older part at depth. Something like that. We'll tidy it up again as we go, but that gives us some idea of the internal structure of this part of the profile. So let's keep working west to the left-hand end of the section. And we want to try and trace this Ergonian down, but as we come across, we can see the dip here is in 30 degrees on the top. But as we come in the line of section in here, the dip is 78 degrees, so it's steepened up. How does it do it? Hmm. Well, let's look at other areas. If we look at, into this valley here and this valley here, we can see the dips in the Ergonian in the valley bottoms, 70 degrees. So it's steepened up very considerably as we've gone to the north and to the south. So presumably it steepens over like this. So if we take these dips like this, presumably the dips come right over something like that. So we can use that to cartoon in the geometry and we'll do the same with this boundary here. So I'm going to correct this. I don't think it's going to keep its dip very, very far, this direction, this shallow dip of 24. Very rapidly will steepen up as the beds go down into the subsurface. So we have these steep dips. Look how steep the boundary is crossing the valley in here. Hardly deflects as you go across this valley. It's a very steep valley. So that's very steeply dipping into this direction here as we're showing. Again, let's color that in. So we've seen that the Ogonian dives into the subsurface, changing its dip as it goes more steeply. So what next? As we come across through here, we can see that the dips gradually become more gentle until we get to A and the dips are only 20 degrees out towards the west. So presumably these beds are going to swing up around the fold structure, creating what would amount to a broad sin form in this position here. So let's, I'm going to start from the over here 
and we'll build this in gradually like this honoring that dip we're going to have to swing this around so that here it honors that dip and here it'll honor that dip so we take our Miocene rocks around like that and let's just do the same with the Eocene we can be guided by the trace we've already got like that and finally the Ergonian as well coming around something like that keeping these thicknesses more or less constant perhaps tidy that a bit more something like that so let's just complete this and take the base of the Argonian around, just eyeballing it in. Of course, it's the assumption these layers retain thickness, but it's a simple one to keep. So it's not a bad one to use for now, as these layers go around the fold structure. So that's how the section broadly works. We can now just tidy up a few things let's make sure these dips are about right well actually maybe that's gone down a bit steeply so i'll take that around something like that there we go that's a bit better that's not too bad that's okay these dips here will very quickly tighten down won't they like that It'll get steep this one likewise and over here and so forth and we don't really know what's going on in here except that the lower cretaceous goes to quite deep in the valley down in here so there's at least that much of the uh, lowermost oldest rocks in the section so we'll take those down to there we don't know what lies beneath but that's not bad like that so we can use this let's just color up the section now so there we go a colored in section i've added some housekeeping in here like the scale i brought out i've added the sea level across here label west and east so the sections oriented i've got um, the main fold structures drawn on and it infers or implies that the Ergonian lies at these sorts of depths beneath this area here. So a quick illustration there of how to draw a geological cross section from a geological map. Things to uh, be aware of, we probably spent most time constructing the topographic profile so that everything ended up in the correct place when we came to draw the cross section. Get that right and then get the geology into the right places on this topographic profile. The rest of this geology becomes quite easy to interpret. But we have to be quite careful to get this right, the early preparation work right, because any errors we put in then will propagate into the rest of the interpretation. But a simple illustration of how to draw a cross section from a geological map.